A small country like Norway is probably punching above its weight as an energy nation. Looking back, we have also had a strong role in international diplomacy. How can we combine this and bring Norway into the front seat of global energy transition, taking lead in international climate diplomacy? Professor Nick Butler from King's College in London discussed this with the Norwegian Minister of Petroleum and Energy, Mrs. Tina Bru. Can I welcome uh, you to, to this digital summit? I think we're uh, delighted to have you and it's very kind of you to spare the time to, to talk to us today. Um, you were appointed just eight months ago it must have been quite a dramatic period and I thought I'd just start by asking you what you feel you've learned over that period. What's changed in your mind about the energy industry that you, you know well, but it, this is a remarkable period. Well, first of all, it's my it's my pleasure to be here, and I only wish that uh, we were in Stavanger instead. But you know, this is the next best thing, so I'm really glad uh, the ONS is able to have this digital conference and that we can still talk about the important issues facing our industry, despite these very difficult times, like you were just saying. And of course, you asked, "What have I learned?" Oh my gosh, I feel I've learned so many things. This past uh, six months have been very different than what I even could imagine uh, my first six months uh, in this job would would entail. Um, just the whole shock with with the, the drop in the oil price uh, because of not only the COVID-19 uh, measures globally, but also uh, the price uh, war that was going on. Uh, so it's been just a roller coaster ride. And uh, I think I'm just I'm just glad now to see that it looks like things are starting to uh, stabilize, that we're seeing positive signs that we're moving in the right direction, but still there's a lot of uncertainty. And I can definitely say that I've learned that we are able to make changes to try to keep activity up and to, to keep the wheels going per se uh, at a much faster pace than I thought was possible from the government side and from parliament here in Norway. And to see to see how industry and decision makers have worked so closely and so hard and so fast to get the right things done to help out the industry and the global situation uh, has been really, really interesting and really nice to see. And I've learned a lot from that. Do you think the events of this year are really going to change the energy sector? Or is it just a, a terrible time after which we'll revert to something close to where we were last year? Are we close to energy transition is what I wanted to Mm, well, my fear has actually been that this was going to slow down the transition that we know is needed because of the whole economic situation globally. And that's uh, not something that's good for investments, whether it's in uh, oil and gas or it's in renewables. And, and just that whole slowing down of the economy is not something that we need at the moment. We need it to go full speed ahead uh, to assist us in the transition. But I think it's too early to say what the long term impact of this will be. Uh, hopefully we'll get back on track. Hopefully it would also maybe spur investments in uh, per se renewables or other uh, low emission solutions. And we're seeing signs of that, um, uh, how many governments uh, around the world and um, many countries have said that they wish to use this opportunity to to enhance their their climate policies and their, their tools for change. Like for example, uh, the Green Deal in the EU, how they have said that they want to use this to excel um, in the in the transition that they're they're going through, despite and also because of the COVID nineteen pandemic and the whole economic slowdown. So there are positive signs, but I still think it's a little bit too early to say. And my main concern was that we would lose many of those companies and those um, uh, many of those companies that we know we need to assist in the transition. And that's also why we here in Norway actually implemented. Uh, for example, uh, a change, a temporary change in the tax regime on our petroleum sector to make sure that we keep investments up so that we have those same companies with us in the future that we know we're going to need to transition also into uh, renewable, um, the renewable sector or other sectors that are uh, in in more climate friendly direction. Do you, do you feel Norway is, is ready for the transition or is it still very focused on 
the oil industry and the problems that that they are having at the moment and the and then the loss of revenue as a result of low prices are, are people thinking ahead or are they very much focused on the immediate difficulties no i think we've been able to do both i mean norway has been ready for change for many years it's not like we We've just now uh, realized that uh, one day oil and gas uh, will be gone. We know that's going to happen in the future, no matter what happens, because, of course, that resource is not renewable. So we have to plan for a future where where this uh, sector means less for our economy either way. Uh, so we've been transitioning for a while and we're seeing growth in many other sectors. Uh, so I think uh, we're able to have two thoughts in our heads at once, uh, because we also know that we need this industry and the competence, the technology that exists here to guide us and to help us build the new jobs in other sectors. For example, I don't think we would ever see a big um, big move towards, for example, offshore wind power in Norway without the big oil and gas companies driving also that transition. So we're trying to do two things at once. And do you think, I mean, there are, there's a lot of populism around and a lot of instant responses that... Uh, perhaps don't understand that energy is both a, is a global issue, climate change certainly a global issue, and the measures that need to be taken uh, are set in that context and not perhaps in the people's own direct immediate experience, like toll roads. Do you, do you find it difficult to explain the, the story of energy, the narrative uh, to people in Norway, or are they really uh, on top of all these issues? Well, I think uh, explaining our whole energy system in, in the global sense of, of things is difficult no matter where you try to begin because it is a huge system. It consists of many different things uh, and changes in the system and how it moves forward also depends on a vast various amounts of different things, not only what one country does, but what other countries around also do. And this, when you put it on top of the climate goals that we have, makes for a really difficult conversation and, and sometimes really hard to explain. But I think this just poses, there's more responsibility on politicians, uh, on on companies, on on everyone who is active in the, the public dialogue to explain things better and maybe start earlier than what we've done before. You need to actually explain why we need this change, how it affects uh, people, businesses, economy. You have to put it into a larger context. And I think this also because of the whole, the way everything is moving so fast now, whether it's the media, it's social media, the conversations, everything happens so fast that it's easy to be blindsided if you're not part of the conversation. So you have to act like you have to actively engage with people and you have to explain where you're coming from. And it's not easy. It's maybe easy to say, but I think it just poses a, a greater responsibility on all of us active in this industry and active in in the whole energy sector to try to explain how all this uh, actually fits together instead of it being something that can divide us. Right. And, and you've been there eight months. What would your aspiration be for over eight years? What would you like to have delivered over that period of time in terms of energy in total and in the transition in particular? Well, I would really like eight years. That would be nice. <laughs> so <laughs> doing for that. Uh, but what I would like to see, if, if I were to be here for another eight years, I would like to see our oil and gas industry bounce back up uh, because we really do still depend on that sector here in Norway. It's so important and it's it's really the technology and competence hub of this country. So I want to see that back on track. I want to see us uh, finding more resources to continue developing the industry while we at the same time actually make big steps forward when it comes to, for example, offshore wind power or even hydrogen, which I, which I think is really important for the future. We're going to need lots of different forms of, of renewable energy and, and emission-free energy to solve our global problems. And I think Norway can take a lead position in, for example, especially offshore wind and hydrogen. So I would really focus on that and, and hope to see, uh, see us make some big steps in that direction. Norway is a I visit when I can and uh, talk to people. It seems to be one of the few countries that thinks more about the world uh, than many others do. And I just see the challenge of climate change is obviously can't be solved in one country, can't be solved in Europe alone. 
Uh, and I wonder if you see a role for Norway in the area of climate diplomacy. I mean, Norway has a great history, back to Nansen, of being involved in international problems and challenges and playing a unique role in bringing people together. Do you see that as a possibility in this area? Yeah, well, even though Norway is a small country, I think we really do enjoy uh, standing on the world stage and we we like to take a, a leader position and to try to move things in, in the direction which we think is, is something that we need for the future. And I do think we've already kind of taken on that role when it comes to climate change. I mean, we, we are the first country who actually increase our goals under the Paris Agreement before anyone else did. And we're actively supporting for the EU to do the same and for other countries as well to, to increase their ambitions and up their goals. So that's just one example that I think we need to continue taking that kind of role. And we've also uh, underlined the importance of the UN Green Fund. Uh, we, of course, support that and many other different parts of this. And I think it's important for Norway as an oil and gas nation and an oil and gas producer to also be heavily and in, heavily involved in the discussions on tackling climate change because we all do bear a joint responsibility for where we are today and we need to have a joint responsibility in moving forward and making sure that the generations that are coming after us can also lead good lives on this shared planet uh, in a sustainable way. So, so Norway likes to take that role, and I think we're going to continue taking that in the future. Great. I, I think it's much needed. Uh, let me just come to a couple of specific areas on the transition and to see where you think Norway might play its part. I mean, you have a great history of maritime marine activity. Do you see the skills being capable of being moved from the oil and gas industry that has obviously been very successful into uh, low carbon marine technologies. Definitely. And of course, like you were saying, with our, our proud traditions in the maritime industry, it's definitely something that we want to keep building on. So uh, this spring, when we, we made the, the temporary changes in the tax regime for the petroleum sector, we also brought a big green investment package uh, through Parliament that's heavily focused on, for example, developing more low emission uh, boats or ships uh, connected to the maritime industry and using that in, in new ways. And the competence that exists in our oil and gas industry is is so important to be able to move this forward. And it's important for us because it's a way of creating new green jobs, new green markets out of what we've been good at for many years and taking the best part of that and using it to something new. So definitely this is something that we're we're really keen on on keeping up our ambitions on, and I think we're going to see more of that in the future, whether it's uh, battery-driven ships or even hydrogen, which is a big uh, opportunity for the future. Let's come on to, to hydrogen. I mean, it's much talked about. It's been talked about for 20 years. Uh, what do you see as the next steps? And do you think Norway can be one of the international leaders in developing hydrogen, either from natural gas or green hydrogen? I think it's important that we all, first of all, agree on that uh, the kind of hydrogen that we need is one that has no emissions. That should be the baseline. Whether it's green or blue, it shouldn't matter because we're going to need all the hydrogen that we can get And when we look at uh, the needs that we're going to have. On, on the energy mix um, and how to produce that. So, so that should just be like a baseline that we agree on that the important thing is that it's emission free. And for Norway, of course, we have great opportunities both within green hydrogen and blue hydrogen, blue from our gas and green from our, our massive uh, renewable uh, production. So we, have, we, can, we can do both uh, basically, but right now we're still at a place where hydrogen is an expensive technologies. We need more research. We need to get the costs down. We need to have more efficient solutions. And right now, blue is a little bit cheaper than green, but I think we can, we're can. we going to see big steps on both of those areas um, moving forward. And I think that's just perfect and great because we're going to need all of it uh, if we're going to reach our very ambitious goals, not least in, in Europe, we're going to need a lot of this. How do you see Norway playing with the Green Deal in Europe? Do you think that that is uh, now naturally going to bring Norway closer to the EU in terms of energy policy? 
already very much involved with the EU when it comes to energy policy, not least because we have an integrated market. Uh, we have interconnectors that go to Europe. Uh, we're a part of the ETS. So, I mean, of course, we're already very connected and our climate goals uh, as well are intertwined with the EU's uh, climate goals. So we're in the same system. And I think uh, we as a country will actively support the Green Deal and moving forward on a lot of those things that um, they are, are highlighting in the in the deal. I mean, they've talked about hydrogen, they've talked about uh, carbon capture and storage technology, which is also an area that Norway has already spent um, a lot of money on developing and researching and we're, we're good at it, we've, we've shown that it works. So definitely I see opportunities um, within uh, some of the areas that the EU is looking at to, to reach its own uh, climate goals. And I hope to work together with them on a lot of this to make it um, to make it good for, for everybody. Many of the climate change lobby uh, talk about extinction, talk about the absolute need to stop using oil and gas to move much more quickly than I think any European country is doing it. What's your message to them? I mean, they obviously, and I know they exist in Norway as well as here and in the UK and everywhere else, uh, and they are fervent in their in the expression of their views. What's I mean? How does how do you as a as a minister and how do you think the energy industry should engage with with those groups? Well, I think uh, we first of all need to all just. Um, we need to understand the sense of urgency. So I, I share that goal with a lot of these uh, activists and those who carry that message. There is an underlying need of and a sense of urgency. But on the other side, as a politician and as someone who has a responsibility to see everything in connection with everything, because that's how society works, you can't move too quickly. You have to do this uh, as a transition where you make sure that you, you carry with you uh, the jobs, the people, um, the competence that they represent into something new. Because if we move too fast, I think we'll maybe end up taking big steps backward because we're, we're going to meet a lot of opposition to, to some of the things that we, as politi politicians, for example, uh, impose. You mentioned earlier the toll roads here in Norway as an example. And I think that is a pretty good example, actually, because a lot of the um, the discussion about the toll roads before they were uh, put in place was the need to to travel more uh, environmentally friendly with less emissions. But when you get to the point where you have to pay a lot of money to actually drive a car, you meet a backlash. So you have to take things gradually. You have to move slowly and you have to um, continuously explain the direction we're going in and why it's needed. So so I, I guess I will probably never agree uh, totally with a lot of these activists. For example, we know the world needs more energy, but we also know that it needs to be clean. So shutting down the oil and gas industry tomorrow, for example, is not an answer. But I have to say that I do support um, support their voice on, on asking for urgency and that people take it seriously and that we start moving forward. I think we've reached the end of our time. Can I thank you very much for joining us? Very grateful. Thank you for your answer.